Hello and welcome to this week's podcast. Uh, this week we're covering women in attics and what they represent in literature. So uh, I'm here with... Neve, Amelie, Millie and Emma. And yeah, I think it's just going to be a sort of general discussion on some of the themes uh, about, the, about what these women represent. And yeah, go for it. Great. So I looked at Bertha Mason within Charlotte Bronte's Jane Eyre as probably one of the most iconic Victorian women in attics. So I think, like more of a general point throughout literature, I think female madness has often been linked to sexual desire. So you get that very much in early modern drama with, you know, Malfi and then Shakespeare did it with Lady Macbeth. And it's been somewhat of a symbol for madness throughout time. And essentially in much of Victorian literature, women have been specifically written into two categories. It's known as the angel whore dichotomy. So you have women can either be virtuous and angelic and innocent, or they can be sexually expressive and therefore mad and not what men desire, and kind of ostracised from society for those reasons. And and that was again like because they were more sexually expressive. And in Jane Eyre, you have these two women. You have Jane, who is virtuous, and you have Bertha, who is well, mad and represents all these sort of fiery sexual passions that Jane doesn't represent. And, you know, it's a novel that follows the building's Roman structure, so it's very much about Jane's sexual awakening. And critics have since surmised that Bertha Mason, essentially, being locked away in the attic, represents Jane's locked-up sexual desires. Um, this is further expressed in reasons for being, like... Um, so Bertha represents the manifestation of Jane's internal feelings. You know, Jane's talked about as being fiery on the inside, but her exterior is very calm and collected, whereas Bertha is very expressive and, you know, externalises her anger and passions and rage. And so critics have since concluded that there is a very distinct parallel between Jane and Bertha, especially seeing as they've both been imprisoned in their lives. So Jane being imprisoned in the Red Room at a a younger age as a punishment for her anger and unwillingness to conform is you know further represented through Bertha and her imprisonment in the attic even in adulthood and then I guess in a more wider social context Bertha Mason also represents um she like she's a symbol of the social exploitation and repression of culture within you know the height of imperialism in the Victorian era and the hand of the British Empire um you know she was a Creole, so she's a daughter of a white European settler in the West Indies. And the idea of her being locked away sort of encapsulates the more xenophobic attitudes of Victorian England and the fear of miscegenation and the idea that she's mixing races. And in the novel Wide Sargasso Sea, you know, she's painted as more of a victim than a villain, like in the original novel. I think that's really interesting. Um, so, carrying on with Amelie's point about um, in Jane Eyre, you have Jane and Bertha, who are two contrasting characters, but they also have um, lots of parallels, and it introduces the idea of um, dark doubles, um, so the idea that you have almost two sides to your personality, um, and this can be used with the idea of the attic, and Bertha being locked away and suppressed is almost like Jane's um, double being kept in an enclosed area um, and introduces the theme of um, madness within women and mental health issues um, because clearly the attic space is very uh, like enclosed area um, where maybe forgotten and old possessions in the house are kept and um, it's the idea of um, mental in- illness being suppressed and trying to be hidden Um, especially in the female characters. Um, The men are often unwilling to um, accept women's mental illness um, and madness, and they try and hide it and conceal it in a domestic setting. Uh, Following on from Emma's point, there's a short story called The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman um, about this woman who... uh, is being kept in a room upstairs and to her the room is uh, she believes that it's a nursery because the wallpaper's torn the bed's scruffy um, but 
the readers are aware that it's actually a place where people with mental conditions have been kept because the t torn wallpaper and the gnawed bed is a result of previous mental breakdowns. And the book is about a woman who is prescribed a rest cure for postpartum depression by her husband and kept in the attic. And the rest cure was this idea that you were, uh, you'd focus on domestic duties, you'd sleep, you'd, res you'd stay out of intellectual activity. And um, it was proved to be unsuccessful. Um, and so in this short story, the character slowly her mental state declines but her husband is completely oblivious to it because outwardly she appears to be getting better and so she's kept in this attic and the wallpaper drives her mad and she believes that she can see a woman creeping around within the wallpaper and the climax of the novel the, pers uh, the short story the perspective shifts and the uh, female character actually becomes the woman trapped within the wallpaper, which I suppose represents uh, how the attic traps woman, women and the rest cure traps women. And Charlotte Perkins Gilman wrote this novel having experienced postpartum depression and um, being prescribed the rest cure. And so wrote it almost in anger and to uh, warn against the use of this treatment for mental health. Yeah, I think it's quite interesting with what Millie said about um, the woman in the tale being locked away after postpartum depression. I think it's quite interesting contextually to consider this idea because we've seen this throughout nobles and gentry in the life of women called when a woman was pregnant, she was simply locked away and removed from society for months until the threat and the danger of childbirth was over, all because of her sexuality and all because of her fertility, that a woman was locked away because of that. And it's quite interesting also to consider the origins of where this madness of women has come from. So from sort of Greek ideas about the wandering womb sorry, and hysteria that existed until 19, the 1930s, and when women became more politically and sexually free, I think it's quite interesting to discover how the female anatomy can have such a big impact on how she's viewed in society because of that. I think that's interesting. So looking at these characters from a modern uh, critical viewpoint, you know, a more feminist one, a more, uh, you know, like lenient, less authoritative viewpoint perhaps, would you say that these characters and their uh, various traits, whether it be sexual desire or uh, mental illness, would you say that these characters are portrayed fairly? Um, That's open. I Go think on. a common theme throughout all these books with women in attics is that they're being suppressed. Um, mm -hmm. Whether that's actually physically being locked away um, by a domineering male character in the book or actually just they're mentally being suppressed and not allowed to have their own thoughts and um, viewpoints really in anything. And the attic kind of encapsulates like the whole um, idea of, you know, lack of freedom and um, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I agree. I think I wouldn't say that specifically birth is represented fairly within Jane Eyre and that's probably what prompted um, Reese to write Wide Sargasso Sea because in the novel she doesn't actually speak the reader's entire perception of Bertha is based on what her ex-husband a man says about her and what Jane experiences of her more violent temper and so I think it's interesting that we hold such a massive viewpoint on a character who never speaks and I think that relates back to the idea of female freedom and mm -hmm. you know the idea that she might even represent a trapped Victorian wife who mm -hmm you know, um, finds no way to escape from her anxiety and frustration and then it consumes her. And I think in that way, Bronte makes quite a powerful message about the need for female freedom. Yeah, and uh, The Yellow Wallpaper is written from a feminist perspective um, in an attempt to represent the kind of repressed women with mental uh, disorders who are 
essentially hidden away and rested and ignored and neglected by her husband and um, so it is it's written not not particularly putting women in a in a strong light because the character who's never named suffers a complete mental breakdown but it is a warning for men and is written to uh, give a narrative to these women that are suppressed mm. I thought, oh, Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I think it's quite interesting as well, linking back to what Amelie said about how Bertha may represent Jane's hidden and concealed sexual desire, even though she is this virtuous character. I think that act and idea of locking a woman away simply in an attic, in an isolated space that is protected by a lock and a key, we often associate that with phallic imagery. So it is completely and utterly degrading this woman down these women, sorry, down to their sexual desire and their moral surroundings. So, so I think, yeah, I think fundamentally, um, the time period that most of these works were written are very repressive times in general for women, um, where, you know, the men were very dominant. And, you know, if you, if you think your wife's um, acting up or whatever, you can any excuse to just go and really do what you want and women had very little uh, freedom and very little of the freedoms that we have today. So I think it's just quite interesting the shift that perhaps these women in literature help to promote about understanding the women's perspective of things because that is quite... In literature that has a flawed female character, I feel like, well, flawed as perceived by men um it's always important to sort of look at that from the female's perspective and figure out why other people perceive her to be flawed when from a modern viewpoint um we could say these women aren't flawed they're just normal people but it's what the men then expect and impose on the women that makes them flawed in inverted commas you see what i mean a really good point. Right. Anyone else have anything to add? No, I think that's it. Great. Excellent. Thank you very much.